thank you so much for that introduction, and it's really exciting to be here uh, with you together, live, in person. Uh, this is the third event in the Funding the Commons um, series. And the first two were virtual, uh, so it's really great to see the community come together uh, in person. Uh, if we, I'm getting a little bit of feedback, which makes it hard to talk, so thank you. That was, that's no, that's still there. Um, uh, great, so what I'm here to talk about is priorities for public goods builders in 2022. Uh, this is gonna be a really critical year uh, for public goods uh, generation. Um, and here, year I'm using, you know, starting from now through you know, the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023. Uh, so what I'm gonna go through is a case for why this year really matters and why this decade really matters in the century. Uh, I'll then talk about crypto econ for uh, solving planetary problems. Then I'll go into how funding the commons got started and what our impact so far has been. Uh, I'll talk about some goals for the next year. And then I'm gonna uh, talk about a few different kinds of mechanisms and experiments that uh, people may wanna try. Uh, I'll try to conclude with some advice and thoughts for uh, public goods builders out there that are trying to experiment with a lot of the tooling. And, um, and hopefully this can be useful in generating a whole wave of, wave of new, um, new things and new ideas and new, uh, new solutions. Uh, so, as I mentioned, the, sorry, the feedback is really like very distracting. Is there any way that we can decrease it? Thank, uh, a little bit lower. Uh, test, excellent. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, so, as I was mentioning, this, there's an extremely critical century. Um, we are writing on um, several centuries of extreme improvement uh, in terms of all our global uh, development across any single against most measures for human well-being um, that we know to track, um, we're just getting this broad-based improvement uh, worldwide. Of course, there's all kinds of things that, that um, it's all kinds of problems exist in the world, and there's all kinds of regressions along the way, um, and there's many things that are getting worse, um, but for most, um, for most indicators of human well-being, uh, the world is in a, in a great trajectory, and the last few centuries have been um, a great direction. Uh, however, we're now confronted with a series of X risks, um, or how uh, uh, David, one of the um, researchers in the um, in our team likes to put, uh, public bads, uh, in extreme public bads, um, that we have to have to really avoid. And these, especially the ones that are human caused, um, present extreme challenges for us to uh, get through. And we, we sort of control the speed at which we'll uh, hit these, uh, but especially things like nuclear war and engineered pandemics and underlying AI, uh, those kinds of risks are, um, sp we're, we're speeding well into those risks, so it's extremely critical that we uh, coordinate our species to, to solve these. Uh, on top of that, there's this uh, large scale um, phase transition that, that we're going through. Uh, as we invented computing and as that computing has uh, evolved and developed over, over the decades, uh, we've gotten to a point where we're starting to uh, blend and merge with our, with our computing systems. In the next few decades, uh, when you look ahead uh, to the next 80 years for the rest of the century, um, we're gonna see the introduction of things like uh, large-scale robotics, robotic swarms, um, augmented reality systems, virtual reality systems, brain-computer interfaces that will break through the barrier between uh, these screens and the internet and, then, um, and our brains. Um, and then we'll make AI systems that will be um, progressively and successively more and more intelligent to the point where uh, we're very likely to uh, discover AGI in this century. Um, many uh, people are now uh, estimating that this might actually happen in the next decade or two, which is extremely alarming in terms of the degree of, uh, of a problem to solve here. Uh, now, to make matters a little bit more trickier, um, the large-scale microsystems that we've been uh, building and which have been responsible for our um, the, the broad improvement and broad well-being for the last few centuries uh, are starting to um, strain, are starting to get captured, um, and they're kind of inadequate for solving these kinds of challenges. They're designed to go slowly, they're designed to solve problems of a different era, and they can't quite cope with problems um, of this magnitude, of the magnitude that we're encountering, and the speed uh, that we're encountering them at. Um, so we need um, a new set of solutions, we need new structures, and we need new uh, coordination mechanisms that can enable us to solve these extreme challenges. Um, and we need those coordination systems to scale, to organize us at that scale, at that macro worldwide scale. Now it's extremely difficult to build systems of that magnitude and of that quality 
um, and hope that they go uh, well. Um, the you know large uh, last macro systems that we built uh, took many iterations. There were all kinds of mistakes made, and they've progressively evolved into a much better structure. Um, so it's a, it's a very difficult challenge to come up with something that um, can improve those systems and um, and handle the the breadth of challenges that that these systems handle really well. And on top of that, then help us solve these uh, next generation problems. Uh, however, the way to get there is by um, applying our best perspectives and theories and testing them in the wild at various different scales, learning from those developments and get to a um, progressively larger and larger um, problem solving scales to the point where we can then coordinate millions of people, billions of people against these problems. So I think the, the, uh, the, the promise of the entire um, um, blockchain world is that, that it's enabling us to have a programmable interface to build these kinds of coordination tools, starting with very small things that let us experiment, and then from, then, from there scaling them to larger and larger sizes, um, and along the way, test that they're working well, test that they're really solving problems, test that they're actually yielding better, better ways of coordinating. So I'm very hopeful that we will um, solve a lot of these challenges, and I think one of the, the um, yeah, I often get asked what has, what has changed my perspective about uh, crypto and Web3 and so on in the time that I've been in the community. And it's that um, I very much undervalued and underestimated the potential impact and the potential utility of these systems. Um, once you get, uh, once you sort of like step back and, and see them for what they really are, um, you, you realize that they're extremely powerful tools that can help us solve these kinds of, kinds of problems. Uh, so let's, let's dive into, into why that is. Uh, oh, and in terms of like um, why this decade and this year uh, really matter is that um, if a lot of these challenges are going to be um, sort of figured out or or um, things are going to be set in motion in the next uh, decade or two, then this decade really matters to get to work through a lot of those experiments, get to really high quality solutions, um, and then from there scaling them. Um, and in terms of this year, uh, in the next, um, the blockchain world and the blockchain systems are now at the scale of you know somewhere between about a trillion dollars in value to three trillion, depending on like which month you look at it. Um, now, that's a big enough scale to try very serious experiments, but not such a big scale um, that it's sort of like a catastrophic system to, to uh, test and vary with. Um, so that's like about the right size scale to experiment with. Um, and if we can get some really good principles into these systems now, while they're still young and they're still uh, very hopeful and very um, positive sum oriented, then they'll carry those principles and those uh, ideas through to much larger scales. Um, kind of what I mean by that is that when you think about um, uh, putting in place things like allocating uh, whole sections of um, a protocol supply towards funding public goods, that kind of policy is very positive sum oriented, very long-termist, and is likely to go through now while the community is, very, um, is still very kind of true to its roots and true to its values, and way less likely to work in the future once um, everything gets much more competitive, much more uh, zero sum oriented, and so on. Uh, so I think now is the right time to put in place these kinds of structures so that when these systems scale by an order of magnitude, two orders of magnitude, and so on, um, they can carry uh, lots of those values uh, with them. Think about the early um, value systems of the internet and how those inspired the web versus the web 2.0 world um, that became much more extractive and, ca and captured. Uh, great, so I'm gonna um, accelerate through these uh, things now. Uh, at the end of the day, what crypto econ is about is uh, crypto economics, the study of, um, uh, block of cryptographic economic structures um, is a combination of a set of fields um, that give us a bunch of tools to analyze these uh, mechanisms that we can deploy at runtime into the worldwide uh, computing infrastructure and then influence uh, groups and large-scale organizations. Uh, at the end of the day, I like calling this software eating mechanism design because it's about the software computing infrastructure that we've built out for the last few decades and using that entire continuous integration and continuous deployment structure with constant improvement and broad deployment into the world and then deploying incentive structures that can organize groups of people whole um, uh, large-scale uh, entities and so on uh, through these systems. Uh, just to give you a feel for how powerful these systems are, just think of the Bitcoin um, energy consumption and realize that that just drops out of uh, two components in Bitcoin. One is the block reward impact evaluator, um, and two, the price of Bitcoin. So those two things yield this 
tremendous um, energy consum uh, consuming uh, system, this was kind of an accident. This was a, a, an accident of, no, nobody quite intended this, this device to um, consume this, this amount of energy and waste this amount of energy. Uh, but this gives you a sense of the power of these, these uh, systems. First off, we should fix this and you know, get, a, get to a, uh, better systems that, that actually uh, make this, this um, energy use uh, useful. Uh, but this, I use this as an example to give you a sense of like, the level of power that comes from these incentive structures and their operation at scale. Uh, in Falcon, we're very familiar with these kinds of structures. We use the same component, um, and we've gotten a feel for how powerful this stuff is. Um, in just a couple of years, we ended up um, organizing the um, build out of a massive hardware um, infrastructure for providing storage to the world um, with, again, just using one core incentive structure, uh, a block reward. Uh, so all of this makes me really, really hopeful um, that we'll be able to build um, these kinds of incentive structures that can scale uh, to solve extremely large planetary scale problems um, by designing incentive structures, in structures, warping the incentive fields, uh, and getting us to, uh, little by little, problem by problem, scale by scale, um, solve challenges. And so I think I greatly encourage you, if you aren't already in this uh, world, to try it out, to try creating some smart contracts and deploying them, um, to try uh, uh, working with other projects and so on to get a feel for how powerful these, these systems are. Um, I, I'm very hopeful that things like this will have a huge impact on planetary scale problems like uh, climate change. Um, I've become very hopeful that these systems will let us uh, coordinate massive action, again, millions of people, billions of people, whole industries, by letting us have the full power of uh, law and economics and so on in a fully programmable um, environment. Uh, I'm also very hopeful that we can get to accelerate science and technology development um, by using these kinds of structures to create instruments to incentivize areas of the innovation chasm that are underserved, areas where it's extremely difficult to um, uh, get funding for certain projects or where it's extremely difficult to um, get long-term rewards or long-term um, uh, success. Uh, er Many of you have probably heard me talk about this science and technology translation problem and the lack of incentive structures in that, in that uh, period in the chasm in the middle. Um, and I think a lot of that just comes from the lack of reward structures there that make it impossible for um, groups, building, um, groups building, building projects there to raise capital um, because there's no good incentive for capital uh, to, to deploy there. So uh, what brought us to, so knowing all of this, knowing that this is a critical century, knowing that um, it's a critical decade and year, um, and knowing that crypto is extremely powerful, um, why are we here? Why are we in funding commons? So we thought about this problem last year, and we saw that the scale of, uh, of, um, of blockchains and the kind of rapid pace of development in industry, um, and the emergence of things like DeFi and DAOs and NFTs and so on, um, and especially the, the broad adoption by hundreds of thousands of people or millions of people of these tools um, gave us a very promising um, uh, landscape to be able to solve these kinds of problems. Um, and so we have the potential to solve all these massive coordination problems, but we're lacking good mechanisms. We need way better governance structures. We need way better uh, funding mechanisms and, uh, and so on. We need to study these things with much deeper theory and much deeper experimental analysis and so on. Um, and so we, and we also ourselves needed better structures, better funding structures, better organizational structures, and so on, to do our own work, to develop our own teams, to uh, grow our own networks. Uh, so based on that, we decided to organize a movement to build these kinds of new models, to arrive at much more sustainable public goods funding, not just sustainable, ideally, um, regenerative um, uh, systems with positive externalities that are not just sustaining themselves at some level, but actually creating a lot more value around themselves. Uh, and we hope to also create structures for much better value alignment within these networks. Uh, so we decided to throw an event uh, uh, last year. Uh, so it's less than a year ago. Um, there's probably a, a number of other people that helped put this on. If um, uh, I, in my memory yesterday, I remembered uh, a set of folks uh, who are here, uh, which I want to thank for, for driving this and really creating this, this event. But it really takes a village to put this on, and especially the PL Events team um, uh, and many others who have helped. Uh, and since then, we've now had uh, three events, two virtual, one in, one in person. And we're scaling the, the community and the size um, of the conversations, the um, systems that we're, we're reviewing, the mechanisms that we're exploring, the studies that we're, we're doing, and so on. Uh, so in this conference, we, we've gone from you know, 11, 18 talks, and now 56. Really encourage you to like, attend all of them simultaneously. Of course, you can do that. Uh, 
course you can, later in time. They're all recorded. Um, and uh, we're also very fortunate to be uh, working with a whole bunch of other folks in the uh, ecosystem building out um, the broader public goods uh, movement in the blockchain space. Um, great uh, thanks to the Gitcoin community and Shelling Point um, and many other, uh, many other groups that are very focused on building regenerative structures. So all of this leaves me uh, very hopeful. Um, you know, our impact so far has been to explore a set of funding mechanisms. Here's a few uh, that I pulled from uh, the YouTube uh, uh, channel. A bunch of these uh, mechanisms are explain, explained and explored and so on. Some of them also have kind of experimental review. Uh, still early days, so a lot of it is still kind of um, not very systematic, not very uh, well uh, experimented upon and so on. But I'd love to kind of crank that up and get to drastically better um, uh, study to the point where we can like analyze these systems with the same level of rigor that we analyze things like network um, uh, protocols or like hardware devices and things like that. Um, we've also um, uh, sort of revived the impact certificates um, idea and, and field. We've um, gotten to explore a, a number of novel entity types. Uh, I know that a few of these are actually getting booted up now, which is really awesome impact for just a few months of uh, talking about things. Um, and we've created some, uh, we've talked about some coordination systems that could be um, extremely useful. I think this is a very promising area, but probably under under um, understudied, and an area that that is maybe harder or seems um, much more difficult to get traction on. So it doesn't get um, studied as much. But I really think this last one, the coordination systems. How do you get large groups of people to organize much better? Um, that holds some of the most promise. Um, as I mentioned, you can access all of these. Uh, all, we're making sure that all of this is getting recorded and built into an archive that you can go and explore, that you can go and send around to other people. If you think that there's an important talk that somebody you know should watch, like please please go uh, uh, refer them to them, and so on. And um, uh, I want to highlight, uh, yes, yeah, so I talked a bit about the funding mechanisms. On the impact certificates thing, um, it's one of these ideas that uh, a number of people have been discussing for the last few years, and this event really helped revive that, that entire uh, track. We'll probably hear a number of talks uh, during this conference about uh, impact certificates. And a number of projects got catalyzed out of this. So it's, that's super exciting. Um, and so this is exactly kind of the kind of thing that we want to have going, not just in, in this one area of impact certificates, but across a whole variety of, of, um, uh, of potential uh, mechanisms, uh, potential systems. So you know, huge props and kudos. Great credit to uh, all the people uh, doing this work. Um, let's, uh, let's work on this in other areas as well. Uh, I think that there's a lot of latent potential in this coordination mechanisms layer. Um, especially, I think there's a, a bunch of really good ideas around um, things like futarchy and other. I'm, I'm not necessarily sure that that particular construction will work, uh, but I think we need to, a lot of experiments with those kinds of governance structures to see if there could be um, ways of governing uh, systems algorithmically um, and, and with a way of aggregating a lot of our perspectives and thoughts and values um, in a much more systematic way than sort of like. Uh, very brittle representative democracy that like doesn't really scale to to millions of people, um, and I think you know in terms of a lot of the mechanisms and structures that that we want to build, um, there's a lot more theory that is needed. There's a lot more implementations that are needed. There's a lot more rigorous study and assessment of of performance and so on that is needed. So um, really encourage you to kind of pick out any of these. There's lots of interesting work to uh, uh, to get done here. Uh, and so yeah, there's a super packed schedule, lots of amazing things. Um, definitely look look forward to it. Uh, I want to frame some goals for the community um, for this next year, uh, and I would love to kind of see uh, some impact in these things. I'm going to be working on a number of these things myself. Would love to invite you to join me and join a number of the other people doing this. Um, and it'd be great to look back. So I like commit that you know a year from now, um, halfway through next year, I'll look back and kind of see how we did on some of these goals. Uh, so uh, you know to introduce these again. This is, a, this is a very special year in Web3 and crypto. There's, this, there's tens of thousands of scientists and builders worldwide. There's massive scale resources in these networks. Proper, well, exper you know, well sized experiment scale. Um, it's very fluid and very easy and very uh, uh, excited. It's a community that's very excited to try new things, that is encountering real large scale problems, and is very interested in, in getting solutions to work. Um, which is very different from a lot of governments. I don't know if, if any of you have tried to change your local government and try to pass something, but it's an extremely grueling process compared to the idea of starting a, 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 system, a community online of people that want to try those, these things and try to experiment with them. Um, 
And I think in this kind of like moment of downturn in, in both crypto and the macro world, it's a great moment to build a lot of these things uh, and get poised for like a very strong refi summer uh, to come out of it. So in the crypto world has had many downturns. I've been in at least four of them. Um, and it usually follows a cycle of um, there's like a big hype moment and then the, a downturn where people start building lots of things. In one of those downturns, I built, uh, started Protocol Labs and built the first version of IPFS and, uh, with a whole number of folks. Um, and then, you know, in the next um, next one of those, we had all of um, the sec uh, new next generation blockchains, the layer, a lot of the layer twos, um, all of DeFi, all of NFTs, all of the DAO tooling, all of that came out of that one of those um, build it, build times. So I really hope that in this next uh, downturn in build time, we can get, build all of these kinds of regenerative structures, um, build out a much better um, uh, framework for studying all these systems, um, and get to a much better better um, uh, outcome. So some some goals. Um, first and foremost, actually, there's a meta goal. Let's um, have a few meta goals. Let's continue to grow this community. Um, explore. A, let's explore a bunch of domain-specific tracks. Let's dive deeper into certain kinds of mechanisms. Let's maybe um, think of um, explore having some um, events that like pull together a set of um, um, people focused very much in one area. Um, let's try and experiment with workshops and hackathons. Uh, I think we've been thinking it allowed together for a while. It's time to um, put a lot of that into practice and stimulate that by having workshops and hackathons that enable both theorists and builders, uh, often the same people, to come together, connect, and make a bunch of these things and experiment with them. Um, I'd love to have some network funding uh, for, for ourselves to build a, a network-oriented grant program to support researchers and builders in the space. I'd love to kind of like target like a, at least, I think a $5 million um, fund size is like a good place to start. Um, of course, if we can get more, that would be even better. Um, I think we, could, we should grow the community. Um, we should think of this as an expansion space for, for, um, for us and bring new people. Uh, so like, let's, each of you, like, bring three new people to uh, the event. And this might be just refer them to like, a talk or something like that, get, get them interested in the, in the um, space, and recommend three speakers that you think should be uh, talking to us about their ideas and their thoughts. Um, uh, I th now, very concrete goals. Uh, I think the impact certificates idea space is extremely interesting and extremely valuable. Um, let's dive deeper into it. Let's deploy more systems. Let's deploy hyper certificates. Um, let's figure out the NFT structures for them. Um, let's build a market. Let's build ideally multiple markets in a few different verticals. And uh, I think it would be amazing to get to a scale of having an impact market with around $50 million in value uh, next year. I think that would be, that, I, I think at that scale is where you can see um, some interesting things starting to, to take shape. Smaller than that is, is harder to see it working. Higher than that is like too hard to kind of reach for in one year. Um, I think the $50 million scale is both achievable, it's very ambitious, but achievable, um, and I think will we'll give us like really good outcomes. Um, beyond that, um, I think impact evaluators are one of these tools that are extremely, extremely powerful. We just ha don't, haven't studied or experimented with them enough, and so I invite everybody to dive into that. Um, I might um, uh, uh, lead workshops and so on, on on this kind of stuff. And, and really, let's study the outcomes because this is one of these things, areas where we want to be careful. Because if you if you get it right, you build um, you know really compelling things. If you get it wrong, you get like a runaway process that is like eating up all the energy in the world. So uh, careful. Um, you know, it's like it's like Mickey Mouse with like the the uh, brooms. So um, yeah, and then I really think that we need much better performance evaluations of all these systems. We need um, good evaluations and good mechanisms and structures. Evaluations of mechanisms and structures. We need better frameworks, better benchmarks to hit. I'd love to get to a governance, a, a set of governance benchmarks where you could kind of like come up with a, with a benchmark test suite to analyze whether a particular governance structure is doing well or poorly for a community. So think of like having a set of features that you would want your governance systems to do well at, and then we can turn that into you know, a set of observations that you could apply on top of any governance structure. Um, and then it'd be great to have that as a test suite for people to, to develop against. Uh, in the computer science world, this has been incredibly instrumental in getting us to build the modern computing infrastructure. Um, almost every field that you can look at in, in computer science um, tends to have these um, a intense battery of tests that we kept getting developed and refined and improved over time that then every successive system has to beat. And so you get this amazing evolutionary structure where whenever you're proposing some new, new system, you can always run it against this ever-growing intense battery of tests and see whether it's actually better. And that yields an extremely good um, uh, evolutionary environment. 
we need something like that for governance structures. We just don't have that. We have no way of, of properly evaluating whether one particular governance structure is actually going to be um, better than another one in a systematic, repeatable way where like, um, we can all clearly see with hard data that it actually works better than another. Uh, and I think it is very, very achievable. Uh, so I'm going to, um, actually, I'm gonna, given the timing and that I wanted to get us on track, I'm going to skip the mechanisms and experiments to try uh, because you'll hear a ton of them um, uh, throughout the week. Maybe I'll give you just one, which is this, uh, this idea of an impact evaluator. Um, I'll maybe describe it in, in, in high level now and happy to talk, discuss it more in detail with, with folks. It's a very simple system which just says that you'll, you're going to have a periodic evaluation of some um, value across a community. So this could be a risk contributed. This could be a um, rated performance against some goal. Uh, and in that, in each time step, uh, your, the impact evaluator is going to release a reward proportional to the value contributed. It's very simple. It it's just provides a uh, long-running, repeatable auction that consumes a set of um, uh, indicators from an environment. So it measures the environment and it, it rates all participants and their contribution in that time step. And then it rewards proportionally uh, all participants with a fraction of the pot uh, together. Now, that sounds kind of serious sum, so you can make it positive sum, uh, thanks to Evan for this idea, uh, or and some other folks, I think, um, by, um, uh, by just scaling the reward gets put out by the increase in the, in the thing you're trying to measure in the indicator. And so this kind of structure can be applied to all kinds of measuring, um, all kinds of properties that you might want to measure, and it's extremely, extremely useful because it gives you this repeatable um, uh, thing that you can just keep um, scaling the level of impact and sharing in that pot of rewards. And if you um, associate the work being done with the value of the reward itself, then you get this amazingly positive feedback loop that then scales really fast. Uh, that's, the ma that's the magic behind uh, Bitcoin and Filecoin and a lot of these um, uh, structures. Uh, so some in the last 50 seconds, some, some thoughts and advice for, for everybody. Um, Connect with other folks. I think um, this is one of those times in, in um, the development of a field where uh, everything is moving very quickly and new ideas will diffuse um, uh, fast. There'll be a lot of um, independent um, discovery or, or independent discovery of the same thing. Um, and there'll be a lot of people very interested in building things. So this is not a time to hold back your ideas and develop them very deeply and then publish something like, you know, kind of like drop information theory in the world or calculus or something like that, and you know, spend five years thinking about it. Um, that is gonna be way too slow, and all, I almost guarantee you that most, if not all of your ideas, will probably get independently discovered. And so you'll do much better by working with a lot more people a lot faster, develop everything much more quickly, get it deployed out there, get it tested, get it um, scaled, um, and the sooner we do this, the better, because all of that value flow will compound. So you know, if, if you have a great improvement and you deploy it now, and it, we get to have more, uh, more months and years to compound it, even if it's like 20% as good as you could have done it in a year or two years, that compounding rate and that utility of like, scaling it sooner will be much more valuable to everybody. Um, so really strongly encourage you to like, collaborate, work with other folks, uh, get things tested, and, and really kind of experiment and try things out. Like, um, just try something, um, see if it works, uh, evaluate it, measure it, and so on, and, and whatnot. And reach out for help. So if you are running into some problem, if you have some ideas, and so on, and you feel stuck, reach out to the community, ask for help. Uh, this is a super positive sum oriented uh, community and group. Uh, everyone helps each other. So yeah, just reach out with, with uh, your thoughts, ideas, and, and, uh, and people will be glad to help. All right. Um, oh yeah, and, uh, ship quickly. So yeah, I guess I kind of made that point. Make it, make it again. Um, and then composability. So uh, really focus on composability of these structures. If you build a thing, um, try to make it as simple as possible and try to make it very composable with other tools and other systems. Uh, that is part of what made DeFi scale. That is part of what made NFTs work really well in scale. That's part of what, um, and I think that's one of the things that's holding back DAOs. I think DAOs are not nearly as composable as they need to be. They're kind of composable, but they could be much more composable. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, uh, Let's uh, go forth and prosper. Thank you.